Hello, this is Deanne from Small But Kind and Mighty. And by the end of this video, you will know how to crochet an amigurumi ball in two different ways and how to close and finish both. If you're a crocheter or you're interested in learning, then please subscribe to my channel. And if you're interested in free patterns and free crochet resources, then keep watching. So how do you crochet a ball? Let's go through the four steps you need to go through in order to crochet a perfect sphere. First, you need to make increase rounds using multiples of six. Before demonstrating how to do this, let me back up a little and explain what I mean. If you watch my video on how to whip stitch, you may recall that when I was a crochet beginner, I wasn't happy to discover that sewing was an integral part of making crochet amigurumi. Oh, come on! Imagine my absolute horror when I discovered that not only did I need to sew, I also needed to do math. Ah! Now if you're designing a piece of crochet, then the math can get quite complex. But luckily, if you're following a pattern, the math is usually done for you. And all you have to worry about is counting and not losing your count when people start talking to you. The shape of an amigurumi piece is determined by the multiples used and the rate of increase or decrease. So, for example, the hat for Beardsley the Woodland Gnome is made with slow increases of multiples of three in order to get a long and pointy look. Beardsley is a free pattern and I will put a link to the pattern in the description box below. I've also got a walkthrough video planned showing you how to make him, so if you're looking forward to that, then make sure you subscribe and feel free to comment, yay for gnomes! But most of my amigurumi pieces I want to be soft and round, and so I use multiples of six, and that's also what you use if you want to make a ball. So let me walk you through the formula for starting a ball and show you how to do it at the same time. To crochet a ball, you'll need yarn, a crochet hook, locking stitch markers, a yarn needle and a pair of embroidery scissors or snips. Don't worry about making notes because I've got all of the details that you need written out in a blog post which I will link to in the description box below. We're going to start with six single crochet in a magic ring and I will link to my video Amigurumi for Beginners How to Start which demonstrates step by step how I make my magic ring. Round two is going to be two times six for a total of 12 single crochets. For an even rate of increase we'll work six increases, so two single crochets, in each of the stitches from round one. You'll notice that I'm working in the back loop only for each stitch and for most of my amigurumi designs the pattern does state to crochet in the back loop only. There's a number of reasons for this and if you want me to explain them in one of my future videos then comment below to let me know. If I was going to crochet a ball working under both loops of each single crochet stitch then I would only do two things differently and I will show you what those two things are later in the video. At this point I would secure my starting tail end and you can see a demonstration of how to do that in the Amigurumi for Beginners How to Start video. Once round two is complete, you will have two single crochets in each stitch from round one for a total of 12. Round three is going to be three times six or 18 in total. To get an even rate of increase, we turn each set of two single crochets into six sets of three single crochets. We do this for each set of two by alternating one single crochet in the first stitch, then an increase or two single crochets in the second stitch. We do that six times, and at the end of round three, we now have 18 stitches. 
Round four is going to be four times six or 24 stitches in total. In this round, we'll turn the six sets of three single crochets into six sets of four single crochets. We do this by working one single crochet in each of the first two stitches of the set, then an increase or two single crochets in the third. We do that six times and we now have 24 stitches in the round. At the end of round four, we've got six sets of four stitches each. Round five is going to be five times six or 30 single crochets in the round. We will turn the six sets of four stitches from round four into six sets of five stitches. And we do that for each set of four by working one single crochet in each of the first three stitches, then an increase in the fourth stitch. We do that six times and we now have 30 stitches in the round. For a larger ball, you would continue your rate of increase by six stitches per round. So round six would be six times six or 36 stitches. For each set of five stitches from round five, you would work a single crochet in the first four stitches and then an increase in the last stitch. Once the bottom of the sphere is about as large as you want it, you'll need to work the same number of even rounds as your increase rounds. In our example, we worked four increase rounds, so you'll now need to crochet four even rounds of 30 stitches each. I've got a red locking stitch marker marking the first stitch in round six, which is the first of my even rounds of 30 single crochet. One of the advantages of working in the back loop only is that the front loops make it easier, especially for beginners, to count stitches and rounds. Step three of crocheting a ball is to work the correct number of decrease rounds. If you're working in the back loop only, then you will perform a decrease by working a single crochet two together. If you are working under both loops of each single crochet stitch, then you can use an invisible decrease. If you're not sure how to do either of those decreases, I've got a video on the mechanics of doing both. Also, at this point, you will begin stuffing your ball, so take a look at this video on how to perfectly stuff amigurumi. For our ball, what you need to know is that the rate of decrease needs to be the same as the rate of increase. So our first decrease round will be to reduce the stitch count of the round from 30 to 24. We do this by turning these six sets of five single crochets we have now into six sets of four single crochets. So for each set of five stitches, we work one single crochet into each of the first three stitches, then a decrease over the last two stitches. You do that six times and you now have 24 stitches. For details of the remaining decrease rounds, please do take a look at the blog post which is linked below. Before I go through the fourth and final part in making a crochet ball, if you're enjoying this video then please do give it a like and let me know in the comments if you're looking forward to seeing how I make Beardsley my woodland gnome. How you finish or close a crochet ball differs slightly depending on whether you have worked in the back loop only or worked under both loops of each single crochet. I'll show you how to do both, but the first step for both of them is to break and pull through your yarn, leaving yourself a long tail end. I'll first show you how to close a ball where you have worked in the back loop only. The final decrease round, reduce the stitch count to six. Thread your yarn needle with the long tail end you had left when you broke your yarn. 
then working from the middle of the opening outwards, thread your yarn needle under the inside loop only of each of the remaining stitches in the last round. Once you have threaded underneath the inside loop of each of the six single crochets in the last round of your crochet ball, then pull to tighten and then secure your tail end using the same method that you use to secure your starting tail end. Hide any remaining tail end within the ball and your crochet ball is now complete. If you crocheted your ball working under both loops of each single crochet, then the only difference in how you will close the opening to finish your ball is where you place your yarn needle. Instead of placing your yarn needle under the inside loop only of each of the six stitches in the last round of your ball, you will place your yarn needle under the outside loop of each of those six stitches. Once that's done, then tighten to close the opening, secure any remaining tail end and hide it within the inside of your crochet ball. Free resources time. If you're a confident crochet beginner or you have some experience in making amigurumi, then you may want to join our pumpkin crochet along. Comment below if you want to crochet a pumpkin with us and I will make sure you get signed up. Also, make sure you remember to download all the free amigurumi patterns that I have on my website. The link is in the description box below. If you're just starting to crochet or you want to learn, then you will definitely want to check out my free beginner crochet package, Learn to Crochet Online. The link to that is in the description box below. And make sure you take a look at the beginner crochet playlists I've got here on YouTube. Look forward to seeing you for the pumpkin crochet along. Thanks so much for watching and I will speak with you soon.